The Yankees and the Dodgers uh, made a trade today. So the Yankees sent Joey Gallo to LA and um, they got back Clayton Beater, a double-A pitcher, who is the Dodgers' 15th best prospect. Uh, but he's currently getting beat up in double-A this year. But Joey Gallo batting 159 this season, 106 strikeouts in 82 games. So not great, but obviously he's still good defensively. He's probably going to take a corner outfield spot while Chris Taylor is hurt. But obviously when Taylor comes back, he'll move over to the bench. Um, I kind of like this for the Dodgers. That's a buy low. I think he can't possibly be as bad as he was in New York. Maybe the lights were a little too bright for Gallo. And who's to say he can't have a, a pretty good second half and be a valuable bench bat for the World Series run? I totally agree. Um, listen, Gallo is what he is. <clears throat> All his underlying statistics, uh, like hard hit percentage, things like that, are basically the same as his entire career. Uh, the average and power is down even a little bit more. But, you know, maybe, like you said, uh, the bright lights in New York got to him a little bit. Maybe that short porch in, in right field got to him a little too much, and he was really just trying to yank balls over there. I mean, totally could be. And, you know, he, he went from being the guy in Texas that every day he knew he was in the lineup, nothing to worry about, didn't matter. The fans, you know, everyone knew what he was. Um, then he goes to New York, and it was like, I don't know. It's like fans expected him to be something different than what he was. Like obviously, that the average is down, but you knew what you were getting, or you, you should have known what you were getting. You know, big power, good on, pretty good on base, and, and just a good amount of strikeouts and, and not a great average, but good defensively. I just, yeah, I think he just needs to get away from New York, and maybe LA is, <laughs> maybe LA isn't the best place to get away from New York from, but. Uh, I think it's a definitely a better situation, and for the Dodgers, yeah, absolutely, it's costing you a kid in Double A for the to to try to fix him or, or you know calm him down and let him let him do his thing. I think it's uh I think it's a great move. It's not like the he's not Juan Soto, but it's not it's not like the Dodgers were dying for uh for good players either. They got they got some of those, but I you know. <clears throat> For his sake, and he's been very – I don't know if you've seen any of the articles uh, in, the, like, The Athletic and stuff, but he's been very open and, and honest about his time in New York and how it hasn't hasn't gone right. And, you know, if you think – if you, you know, if you don't think that he's upset with how it went in New York or that he – that it was probably miserable for him, you know, and you can't get away from it. It doesn't matter how much – this is another, like – thing that that fans don't totally understand it's like guys they think guys make all this money and it just doesn't doesn't matter to them if they're playing good or, or not you know of course the money is great and you don't have like real problems when you're making that kind of money but it, it doesn't take away from the suck of sucking like sucking is not fun no matter how much money you're making so yeah, I'm not saying feel bad for the guy, but I'm sure that it was it was not a good time for for Gallo either, and that he's he's done some some soul searching, and and hopefully he can turn it around. That's very kind of well said. I want the Padres to to win, but whatever. <laughs> that, that's very well said. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he, batting that having batting 159 with 106 strikeouts in New York, where every day you have fans on your ass about that kind of stuff. I mean, that's gotta suck. I mean, I can't imagine showing up to the ballpark every day and, and having the Bronx faithful just rip you a new asshole every single day you show up. So, uh, yeah, quite quite the change of scenery compared to Texas where things are a little bit more friendly. You know, I, I think back to one of those years, Gallo, I think, had like 40 homers and like 90 RBIs or something. So just <laughs> it's one of my favorite years ever. It's like, how do you do that? That's that's hard to do. you think there'd be some guys on base. Um, but I have a potential Dodgers lineup for you. Uh, that okay. I wanted to read off. Betts, Freeman, Turner, Trey Turner, Will Smith, Justin Turner, Muncie, Bellinger, Gavin Lux, and Joey Gallo. Gallo is your nine-hole hitter, according to MLB Network's potential. It, dude, that's a really good lineup. Like you said, they're missing Chris Taylor. Um, and they could, you know, they could switch Gallo in and out. But to me, the key for the Dodgers is those, you know, the top three guys – 
you know are going to hit, and even Will Smith. Uh, if if they can get close to the old Muncie and Bellinger, I mean, that lineup gets real scary. They're both struggling this year, and but obviously Bellinger was an MVP, and Muncie's had some really, really good seasons. So if they can get – any of that production back, man, that, that lineup starts to become pretty scary too. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. One last, last thing. So actually Gallo in 2018 had 40 homers and 92 RBIs, but in 2017, it was even funnier. He had 41 homers and 80 RBIs. (laughs) That's a combination of two things. Yeah. No one's on base obviously, but also they probably didn't pitch to him very much when anybody was on base. So he just stood there and, and took his walks. 41 and 80. It's my favorite. It's my favorite baseball thing ever. Uh, so shout out Joey Gallo, your, your newest LA Dodger.